I call this hearing to order. Uh, today we will consider the Endangered Species Act amendments of 2018. Now, I'd like this discussion draft to serve as the foundation for a bipartisan effort to modernize the Endangered Species Act. If we work together, Republican and Democrat, we can ensure that this important law fulfills the full conservation potential and works better for species as well as for people. Congress last reauthorized the Endangered Species Act with amendments of substance in 1988, 30 years ago. Even the U.S. Constitution has been amended more recently than the Endangered Species Act. Stakeholders are making it clear that the Endangered Species Act can be improved. A major goal of the Endangered Species Act is the recovery of species to the point that protection under the statute is no longer necessary. Since the ESA was signed into law, only 54 out of 2,393 species listed in the U.S. and foreign countries have been delisted because they have recovered. That's less than 3%. Now, as a doctor, if I admit 100 patients to the hospital and only three recover enough under my treatment to be discharged, Governor, I would deserve to lose my medical license with numbers like that. When, when it comes to the Endangered Species Act, the status quo is not good enough. We must do more than just list species and leave them on life support, but that's what we're doing now. We need to see species recovered. So in June of 2015, as then chairman of the Western Governors Association, Wyoming Governor Matt Mead took on the challenge of identifying opportunities to modernize the Endangered Species Act. Now, the Western Governors Association represents governors of 19 Western states and three U.S. territories in the Pacific. He launched the WGA's Species Conservation and Endangered Species Act initiative. Three years later, Governor Meade's groundbreaking initiative has facilitated a bipartisan dialogue of stakeholders from across the political spectrum. They've resulted in three annual reports, the adoption of a bipartisan Western Governors Association policy resolution, and the adoption of bipartisan Western Governors Association policy recommendations. This month, I've released a, a discussion draft, the Endangered Species Act Amendments of 2018, and is based on the Western Governors Association's principles and policies. Earlier this year, I received a supportive letter from the WGA signed by its chair and its vice chair, Republican Governor uh, Dugard of South Dakota and Democrat Governor Ige of Hawaii. It commended our efforts to address, quote, this polarizing topic in an inclusive, thoughtful manner. It noted, quote, the proposed bill reflects this fact and offers meaningful bipartisan solutions to challenging species conservation issues. It continued, the proposed bill is generally consistent with the Western Governors Association recommendations, and the Western Governor Associa Governors Association offers its support for the portions of the bill that are consistent with existing Western governor's policy. The discussion draft was also shaped by input from two EPW committee hearings last year. We heard from a diverse bipartisan group of witnesses and panelists, including former Democrat Wyoming Governor Dave Friedenthal and Fish and Wildlife Directors from across the country. Each of these witnesses and panelists acknowledged that the Endangered Species Act could work better. Many believe the foundation established by the Western Governors Association was a good starting point for modernizing the act. The discussion draft elevates the role of states in partnering with the federal government to implement the Endangered Species Act. It affords states the opportunity to lead wildlife conservation efforts, including through the establishment of recovery teams for listed species and developing and implementing recovery plans. It provides for increased regulatory certainty so stakeholders are incentivized to enter into voluntary conservation and recovery activities. It increases transparency. It codifies a system for prioritizing species listing petitions so limited resources flow to the species most in need. Over the 45-year life of the Endangered Species Act, the capacity of state wildlife agencies has grown significantly. According to the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies, states now spend over $5.6 billion on conservation and employ approximately 240,000 people and volunteers. Of that number, 50,000 are employees, including over 11,000 degreed wildlife biologists, over 10,000 wildlife law enforcement officers, and 6,000 employees with advanced education degrees. 
combined, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the National Marine Fisheries Service employ only 11,661 people. So the substantial resources of the states are not located in Washington, D.C. These state agencies are in the field every day working to protect wildlife. The draft bill has received broad support from conservation and stakeholder groups alike. Over 100 organizations have already written to the committee to express their support of this effort. So I look forward to working with the members of this committee and the larger stakeholder community to find a bipartisan pathway to meaningful modernization of the Endangered Species Act based on the Western Governors Association's recommendations. I now turn to Ranking Member Carper for his statement. Thank you.